Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic and I get many questions from people on this topic which is about the different file formats that we most frequently use in the big data world. So today I'm going to cover three file formats Parquet, Avro and ORC and I will talk about what they are, what is the structure underneath and what are the advantages that these file formats offer. So let's get started. First of all, even before we start talking about this fi these file formats, I would like to just briefly talk about how is a row oriented storage different than a column oriented storage. Because uh, in the big data world, we are talking about terabytes of data and the kind of file format that we choose also determines our storage space, our compression ratios and the performance that it gives. So to do that file selection, it is also important to understand the fundamentals or basics of what a row storage is versus a column storage. Let's take a very simple example. So we all are familiar about tables and how data would look like in a table. So let's say there is a table which has three columns, country, product and sales. And there are four rows uh, which is shown here. Now, if I have to store this whole table, so table is just a logical structure of how our brain perceives about data. But when it comes to storing this data actually on the disk, the way it is stored is different when it is row oriented versus column oriented. And it typically depends on the use case that you're trying to achieve. Based on that, you would select a file format or a storage format. Okay, so if the table uh, has three columns, if it is row oriented, what will happen is when it is actually stored on the disk, each row would be stored together, which means one row corresponds to these three columns, country, product and sales. So when it gets stored, each row is stored as a contiguous block. So that means all the three columns data is stored for this row one together, then row two, then three and four. Now, this is a very simplistic diagram just to explain the concept. But this is how it will get stored in a row based storage. And this is beneficial when we have queries or patterns where we are accessing the entire row together. But instead, there, there are multiple formats and we look at those ORC and Parquet and Avro, all of that. So there are column oriented formats. Why? Because there are certain use cases or patterns where we don't want to access the whole row, but we want to access one particular column for all of the rows. So there it is more beneficial to have a column oriented storage. So if you see here, the data is stored column wise. So when we look at the actual storage where this file data, or the table data is getting stored, it is storing uh, the columns together. So country as a column, all values are stored together, then product, then sales. So this is a very, very basic difference between row oriented storage and column oriented storage. Now let us start with one of the very, very famous and prevalent file format, which is Apache Parquet. Now, what is a Parquet file? A Parquet file, it's Apache Parquet is open source column oriented data file format. It was designed to have very efficient data storage and retrieval, and it is very, very commonly used with Spark. And what essentially Apache Parquet does, like I said, it's a column oriented storage. It is very efficient uh, because it provides very good efficient data compression uh, ratios. It provides encoding schemes with enhanced performance and it can handle complex data in bulk. Also, Parquet is designed to be a common interchange format for both batch and interactive. So if you look at even Databricks documentation, you look at using what file format with Spark, you will constantly see Parquet coming up as a good candidate. It can be used for both batch scenarios and interactive scenarios. So let us go a bit deeper into how does a Parquet file internally look at. So you can't read Parquet file by just double clicking and opening that file. So you actually read it using a program. Now the way Parquet would internally look like is it will have three sections, the header, the actual data block and the footer. Now each block in the Parquet file you can consider, let's look at this between like the centerpiece data block. This is a header, this is a footer, but the data block of a parquet file will have multiple row groups. Now, what does that mean? Row group is nothing but a collection of multiple rows grouped together. That's the row group. But since it is a column oriented storage, it is not storing the entire rows data together, 
but within the row group it is uh, keeping the columns together so what ha what is happening is you have three parts of a parquet file header data block and footer the data block is actual data that is stored in the file and it will be divided into multiple row groups okay these row groups in turn would consist of column chunks that correspond to the columns in those rows because it's a column oriented from format and each of those column chunks column chunks means like we saw in the previous slide um, that there were three columns country etc so if you take country out of country it will pick up a couple of rows take the value of country and group it together these are known as pages so it's a data block row group column chunks and pages the basic fundamental unit is pages if we look at it further how does the actual file look like so uh, this is the footer now footer is very important we looked at the data block how it is uh, structured but the footer is very important because the footer has the metadata about the file and that is why parquet is so efficient because it stores multiple information that you can glance through and skip to the next rather than going inside and scanning the whole data just look at the metadata because what it does is it tells you things about the version the schema then it tells you the encoding system the used the compression size and it also has so every row groups metadata is stored in the footer the footer also has certain magic number the spar one like that you would see a magic number associated with every parquet file but why parquet is efficient is because it stores this metadata for each of the file you can look at the metadata and see the min max that the file stores and decide whether you actually want to go and scan the whole data or not so what are the advantages the advantages it is very good for storing any kind of data structured unstructured images videos documents any type it saves on the storage space because it is it has high compression ratios it is it has flexible encoding schemas that is why it saves on storage space it helps in having a increased data throughput and how is that happening because uh, we can do data skipping how data skipping can be done by looking at the metadata we can decide whether this whole file needs to be scanned or not so that's how the parquet the whole thing works at first whenever we try to read a parquet file through a program it will go to the footer read the metadata accordingly decide to go in the file or not so it is very very efficient in terms of reading data in terms of compressing and storing any types of data now let's come to the second uh, type which is avro now avro is ideally a data serialization system which means avro if we talk about avro file it carries its own schema within the file so it is always serialized with the schema the schema is bundled with the data the avro specifies specifies two types of serializations uh, encodings like binary and json so most of the applications will be using binary encoding because it is smaller it is faster but certain times for web based applications etc json encoding may be used and it avro typically you would see that avro defines a standard sort order for the data so it is more efficient but all in all one of the basic advantages of avro is it is bundled along with the schema so it is basically data with a schema right and this is how avro would look like how will the file look like again you will have a header you will have one or more blocks of normal metadata at least one block which means you will have a header you will have multiple blocks of data each block will then have the count of the objects that are there the size of the serialized object and then there is a marker and the header of course will have some metadata about the avro schema and codec but typically this is how a avro file would look like it look like it's a collection of multiple blocks and a header along with that avro and um, it does carry the schema along with the data what is the advantage advantage is compression so avro does compression automatically it is a fully typed serialization format it contains both schema and the data data can be read through multiple languages and avro allows you to do schema evolution the reason being avro contains its own schema so it is 
easier to interpret the data even if the schema evolves. Now the since Avro supports uh, read through many languages, data can be the data written in Avro files can be passed from one program to another with different languages. One program can be written in one language, the other can be written in another language. But it is possible to read data between these two programs using Avro files. Now coming on to the third file format, which is ORC. ORC stands for Optimized Row Columnar Format. Typically, ORC formats were used very widely with Hive. This is also column oriented data storage. It was suited for Hive and it has its own self describing schema. So it's a very popular file format used for efficient storage, processing of structured and semi structured data in the big data environments. How does a ORC file look like? Now again, ORC file will contain a group of row data because it's a columnar oriented storage, but then what happens is again you like just like parquet we will see groups of row data but here it is called stripe there will be a footer and at the end of the file there is a postscript which holds the entire information about compression parameters and the size of the compressed footer so here if you see these are stripes each stripe is around 250 mb within each stripe we will have index data a group of row data and stripe footer. The file footer will contain a list of stripes in that file. So this file footer that we see uh, here, the stripe footer tells us about what data is stored in the row data. It will contain aggregates, counts, min, max, sum, etc. This will help us to understand what does the data look like within each stripe. So that's why ORC is efficient. And uh, if we specifically talk about stripe, what is stripe? Each stripe in the ORC file will have index data, a footer and row data, group of row data. The stripe footer, what is the function of that? It will uh, contain the directory of the stream locations where the data is. Okay, it is very beneficial when we have to scan the actual data. Similarly, the index data will have things like min value, max value of each of the columns. So the moment you look at the footer, you look at this data of min and max, you know whether you should go and scan the data or not. Is the data present in this particular stripe or not? Or you can skip the stripe. Now these indexes that each ORC stripe has is just meant for understanding whether this stripe should be selected or not. So you keep on skipping stripes. The moment you reach a stripe where you see there is a probability of finding your data, only then you go and scan the whole row groups that are present in the uh, stripe. Now Spark provides two types of ORC implementation, native and hive. Native is designed for uh, Spark's data source. So basically, when we talk about native implementation uh, of ORC in um, Spark, it is designed to follow the data source behavior like Parquet. But when we talk about Hive implementation, it was uh, basically designed to follow or use Hive surveys. So both the kind of implementations are present for ORC within Spark. So I hope this gives you a very quick snapshot into the most th three most commonly used formats of Parquet, Avro and ORC. Please like, share and subscribe and keep um, tuning into the channel to get more interesting videos. Thank you so much.